Hey, what's going on, movie lovers all over the world? You already know it's your boy Testify to the Music, a.k.a. Mikey Savage 21, bringing you another movie review. And today, I'm going to be giving my non-spoilers review for the movie Kubo and the Two Strings. Stay tuned after the preview. If you must blink, do it now. Pay careful attention to everything you see. No matter how unusual it may seem. If you look away, even for an instant, then our hero will surely perish. Your magic is growing stronger. But when we grow stronger, the world grows more dangerous. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that clip and it gave you a little bit of a sense of what this movie was about. Now, again, wrapping this movie up in a pretty little bow, this is the story of a boy named Kubo who ends up going on his journey to find these mystical, magical weapons that can help him ultimately protect himself from his grandfather. Um, you have a sword, you have the body armor itself, and then you have the helmet. And that's pretty much the basic plot. Just straightforward. Again, it's about Kubo going on an adventure to find these elements. And he ends up having help from Monkey. And ends up meeting a beetle later on into the film. They end up joining him on this journey. And protect him from the forces that are trying to keep him from finding this mystical, magical armor. Alright, so getting into my positives about the film... One of the first positives I want to talk about is the animation and how beautiful it looked. Laika is very notorious for using beautiful claymation animation. And one of the things I like about Laika is they take their time with their animation. I know that a lot of people talk about Disney and Pixar and Illumination and Warner Brothers and other companies that do animated films constantly and how well their animation looks. Um, but you don't hear too many people brag on Laika because it takes so many years for them to do the claymation style that a lot of people just kind of forget about what was at one point. Because I remember when Paranorman came out, that was one of the movies I definitely went to see in theaters around Halloween because it was just that great of a film. And like I said, I've liked all of Laika's films, whether it be Coraline, Paranorman, The Box Trolls, every single movie that they have put out, I liked. And I gotta, like I said, mad props to them on this film as well. The animation in here was so beautiful. The water looked real. The snow looked real. The fur on Monkey's body was moving throughout the entire movie along, you know, along with the wind and the action pieces that were going on. That, to me, says that these guys know exactly what they're doing and I gotta again give mad props to like animation for what they have done with this film it just looks absolutely beautiful all right getting into some more positives I like all the voice actors they chose here uh, what I really like about the voice actors that they particularly chose is that the actors they chose they match their characters very well and the actors lost themselves in their characters to the point where I didn't know Matthew McConaughey was playing Beetle I didn't know Char Charlize Theron Charlize Theron was playing the mother I didn't know Joyce Takai was had a I didn't know that Rooney Mara was playing the two evil sisters I didn't know all of this was going on because it just got mixed in so well. So again, I got to also give them mad props on their voice actors and how they picked them and how they, again, like animation is very notorious for handpicking actors that really fit the characters to the point where they lose themselves in the character, similar to how they did with Paranorman, how the characters lost themselves in that movie and you recognize the voices in Paranorman, similar to how you do in here, but it, it, you get so bought into the characters to where you forget, oh, wait a minute, this is just Matthew McConaughey doing voice acting. This is not him actually on the actual screen. All right, another positive thing that I liked about this was 
the usage of culture. You heard me talk about this in videos before. I like movies that dwell deep into the culture of certain things. And I like how the Asian culture is really put on display here. Down from the action set pieces to the backdrops that they have in the film to the music and the stylization of, of how it is along with the characters as well. I like how the Asian culture is represented fully here. And again, you don't have too many movies that are doing it nowadays over here in the States. And again, I commend them for doing that because it gave you a real look into the Asian culture when you talk about legends of samurais and ninjas and, 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 and different Greek gods and things. You get a real look into the Asian culture and what it's like. And, and again, the music. I've got to go by this soundtrack because each piece of music fit the scene well as opposed to where in Suicide Squad where it was overbearing. The music here fits so well with each scene and each action set piece to the point where if you took that music out, the action just wouldn't work because the music needed to be there and especially the beautiful song that was sung at the end of the film. So make sure you stick around after the credits to hear that beautiful, amazing song because it just wrapped up the entire movie in one little neat package and put a bow on top of it. All right, so again, some more positives to this film. And again, I could go on for hours and hours talking about the positives to this. All right, again, another thing about, about this movie that was a real positive is the character building. Um, I like how the characters go on this journey and you can see a subtle difference in them. Well, I should say a huge difference a difference in them towards the end of the film. Like Kubo, he starts off as this real quiet, laid-back guy who's all to himself and is real reserved and is a little timid at times. But then when you get to the end of the film, he is this brave young warrior who has just gone through this amazing journey to find these three mystical, magical pieces of armor that are going to help him essentially claim his birthright and take back what was originally his so you have all of that going on so again i gotta come in like an animation for this they made me care about these characters more so than than david Ayer did in suicide squad now i know i mentioned in my review two weeks ago that i cried during suicide squad at one point because i thought the characters were about to meet their end but here, I was instantly bought in. As soon as I saw Kubo and his mother come on the screen, within the first five minutes, I was already bought in. As opposed to with Suicide Squad, it took me a little portion of the film to really start to care about the characters. Kubo actually did that right away with the characters. All right, so as far as negatives go, I really personally only have one negative, and that would be some of the scenes that lead into the next scene, it seemed like there were certain pieces maybe taken out, and it just kind of felt a little jarring to me. Uh, again, most recently, I've seen films lately that I watched. There seems to be a scene, and it doesn't nece necessarily flow into the next scene. You could tell that was a scene cut out. Uh, there are pieces of dialogue that just don't work when you get to the next set piece, and Again, that's really the only minor negative. And again, it's like a minor nitpick as well. And again, I don't want to nitpick on it. But yeah, it just felt like sometimes in certain parts it was a little jarring. Uh, other than that, I really have no negatives for this film. I highly recommend this film. As far as the score goes, I'm giving this a solid 5 out of a 5. This is definitely something that you need to go see. It is an original creative film by Like Animation here. And again, following the formula that they usually do where you have a young child going on this adventure and journey to where they start to mature and grow on their journey. And when they get to the end of it, you can really see the maturity level in that character. They make you care about these characters. They reference the Asian culture multiple times and reference it well. The voice actors were on point. Again, you care about these characters and the set pieces look absolutely beautiful. The 3D in this is amazing. Again, you have 3D claymation style. Some people try to do it and it doesn't work out so well, but this looks so flawless and so beautiful down to the very detail of monkey's fur to beetles flapping wings. You really just can see that there was a lot of thought put into this movie. So again, I highly recommend you go check this out. 
So with that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this review. Let me know down in the comment section below, do you plan to go see this movie? Have you already seen the movie? And if you did, what did you think about it? Let me know in the comment section below and let's chat it up and discuss it. Also, again, apologies for not having this up earlier. My Wi-Fi has not been working all week, and so I have been without Wi-Fi all week, but I have plenty of movie reviews coming for you guys. Thank you all to you who have subscribed to my channel, and thank you to the newcomers who have subscribed to my channel. I hope I continue to provide quality movie reviews and quality content for you on this YouTube channel both to my old subscribers and my new subscribers. Again, thank you so much for the continued support. You can follow me on all the social media sites at I Am Testify, both including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and SoundCloud. Follow me on all of those. And again, let me know down in the comment section below what you thought of this review. And if you liked it, make sure you smash that thumbs up button. But with that being said, guys, you already know, this is your boy Testify to the Music, a.k.a. Mikey Savage 21, saying peace out.